Chapter 8, Applying Yield Percents. So this is a carryover of Chapter 7. They kind of go hand in hand. So in Chapter 7, you learned about what is yield percent. And in this unit, we are going to learn how to apply the yield percents. Um, and to do that, you're going to calculate the as purchase quantity when the edible portion quantity is provided to you. And then you'll also calculate the edible quantity when the as purchase quantity is given to you in specific scenarios. So here is a scenario that you would use yield percent. So the Thanksgiving pie sale production has commenced and you have calculated that you need 15 apple pies. And to make those apple pies, you need 28 and a half pounds of peeled, cored, and sliced apples. So you order exactly 28 and a half pounds of apples. You're about to prepare and suddenly you realize you do not have enough. If you peel and core the apples, you will have less sliced apples than you actually need. You have forgotten to account for the trim loss and have not ordered enough. So in this scenario, it's important to remember that the trim loss, meaning the peels and the cores, need to be taken into account when you're ordering any fresh produce, like fruits and vegetables. So you can predict how much extra you need, but without doing an actual calculation, you won't really know, and you don't wanna to have too much, and you also don't wanna to have too little. It's not cost effective. So it's really important that you know how to apply these formulas. So like I said, in the last chapter, we use yield percent, and in this chapter, you are going to investigate the application of yield percent to solve situations similar to this one with the pies. So how do you do this? First off, you're going to calculate the as purchase quantity. So to calculate the as purchase quantity, it's really important um, to consider, like I said, the trim loss when you're calculate, calculating, you know, when you're buying ingredients um, because you want to make sure that <clears throat> you have the edible portion amount accurate. Um, if you confuse the as purchase quantity with the edible portion quantity, the recipe, it just may not work or it will not have the desired outcome or portions that you want. So for purchasing, um, edible quantity must be converted to the as purchase quantity using the, per, the yield percent, and you would use the formula here, APQ, which equals uh, EPQ divided by yield percent, and you would put that into decimal form. So depending on what information is provided to you, that's how you kind of will plug it in. Um, and then when do you use the APQ formula? If you're in a situation where you're given the EPQ and asked to determine how much to order, then you would use this formula. So you're always going to want to reference these steps because it will make the process much easier. All right. All right. So here is an example. So it has already been determined that 28 and a half pounds of cleaned apples are needed to make the apple pies for the pie sale. Apples have a 76% yield. Calculate the amount of the apples that should be ordered to make the pies. So in this case, you are provided the EPQ. You need 28 and a half pounds of peeled and cored apples, which is the EPQ. And you're going to divide that by the yield percent, which is provided to you. So you're going to put the yield percent in decimal form. So 0.76. And when you do that calculation, EPQ divided by the yield percent, you get 37 and a half pounds, which is now your ABQ, which we would round up to 38 pounds. So you don't, again, you'll have a little more than the 37 uh, and a half pounds because you're going to round up to 38, but you don't want to have too much because of theft, spoilage, excessive waste, etc. It's always good to have just a little extra even with taking yield the percent into consideration, but not a lot, all right? And you also, when you round up, you always want to make sure you're rounding up rather than round down just because you won't have enough. So how do you calculate the edible portion quantity? So the edible portion quantity formula is EPQ equals APQ times yield percent. Okay, so when do you use this? If you are in a situation where you need to calculate the amount of clean fruit or vegetable that can be obtained from the amount that you have purchased, then you would use the EPQ formula. And then again, the rounding reality, the number of portions should always be rounded down since it would not be feasible to serve a partial portion to a guest. 
And then here's an example. You purchase a case of fresh green beans that weighs 20 pounds. How many one fourth pound servings of fresh clean beans are in the case? First, you need to look at the yield percent for the green beans, which when you look in the yield percent universal guide, green beans have a universal yield percent of 88%. Um, so you would apply it to the formula of 20 pounds. So um, you, and you can see we're looking for the edible portion quantity. So that as purchased <clears throat> is 20 pounds times yield percent as a decimal, which is 0.88, and it's going to give you 17.6 pounds. So the calculation shows that the edible portion quantity would be 17.6 pounds. Now you need to calculate the actual portions, and each portion is a quarter pound of clean green beans to be served from the 17.6 pounds. So you'll take your number of servings, to calculate number of servings, you're going to take your edible portion divided by portion size. So 17.6 divided by 0.25, because that's the portion size, and you're going to get 70.4. So you should be able to obtain 70 full portions of the green from the case of green beans. Okay. So the steps for using the EPQ, APQ, and yield percent triangle are just the same. They're just relisted for you. So you can still reference this when you're trying to calculate. And even when I am given problems and scenarios, I always go back to this slide because it's really simple to just follow the steps. And eventually, the more you do it, the more simple it is. And that leads us to our chapter eight practice problems. So again, go through them, follow along using the steps or the other steps on the other slides. Um, and then you use the next chapter eight screencast um, for the practice problems to check your work. Ask questions if you need clarification. Thank you.